Hi, it's Kim, and this week we're going to plant some baby tears in my hypertufa bowl. I've decided to bring these inside. They've been out in the summertime, so I've got to be a little cautious about bugs in the house. I've prepped a bowl that's been empty for a while, put it in the sink, soaked it real well so it'll be full of moisture, soak the little drain thing too, and I'm going to use some of the bonide systemic granules for insect control. Now I've shown you this many times in previous uh, movies, and uh, this will help with fungus gnat larvae, mealybugs, all different kinds of bugs. It is systemic, it goes into the plant through the roots, and anything that munches, eats on the plants, eats around the plant, will die. It lasts up to eight weeks and you have to renew it. I'm using some cactus potting mix, a fast draining formula. It's great for succulents, but I think it's gonna be perfect for my um, baby tears. The baby tears are typically a moisture loving plant, but I'm going to plant them in hypertufa because I think that'll work well for them because I can really keep the hypertufa soaked. Now I'm gonna mix up just enough soil for this plant and I'm estimating that to be maybe about a half gallon of soil. And so I'm using it just as it comes straight from the bag because it does have a lot of drainage already built in and so that's what I'm going to use for this plant. You can see it's real fine, got a lot of grit in it for drainage and since a one gallon plant calls for two and a half tablespoons, I'm going to use about one tablespoon, maybe one and a quarter. So you can see I'll measure here with the half tablespoon and then the quarter, I'll just have a little extra to sprinkle on the top. So I think that gets it, um, you know, should treat for bugs in this. And sorry I didn't go get a rake or something, a special planting tool, but a fork does just as well since I'm doing this in the kitchen. And I'll remove those large sticks that are in the soil. I don't want that to mess up anything. So it looks pretty good, all mixed in, and again, that'll soak through the roots. So I'll fill this little bowl full and kind of pack it down because I want it to be um, firm in there and not settle and draw away from the baby tears. Now the baby tears are typically a terrarium plant or a regular plant that just gets a lot of humidity and moisture. It has to really re remain moist all the time, but not soggy. You don't want it to be soggy. So that's why I thought hypertufa would be especially nice for this plant, because I can soak it. I On my post over on the website, I wrote a blog post about the conditions for baby tears and hypertufa and why I thought they matched pretty well. Typically I do succulents, but these baby tears are gonna be nice too. I have grown them, them in there before. Now my baby tears look like they were near ready to bloom. They had small buds on them. I'm going to cut off all the little trailing um, limbs that are coming off of it and save those to root in a terrarium or a teapot, something else that I can plant inside. But all these little tendrils, practically just drop them into some soil and they will root. This plant roots very, very easily. And it can quickly carpet a terrarium or something like if you were making a fairy garden or something, the baby tears are perfect for that. And you can see those tiny little buds. I've had them bloom for me before. Little tiny pink roses. They're so tiny you almost wouldn't notice them. But we're going to see what we can do to get this indoors. Now you can see how thick the carpet grows. 
and this was in kind of a shaded bright light area outside under some trees so it did pick up a lot of good light strong light and I'm basically inspecting the soil so that I can see if I see any any bugs right on the surface that are large enough to see and kind of pick those out and eliminate those because I don't want to carry anything in but I'll show you toward the end of the video how I'm going to um, combat any insects that might be carried in. I call them hitchhikers. And ordinarily, I don't like to bring in plants that have been outside, but I'm making an exception for my baby tears. Now, I am going to spray it with this fungicide, insecticide, miticide, so that I can guard against spider mites, um, any kind of creepy crawlies that I just can't see because they're so tiny or they're evading my eyes. But we will isolate and contain the plant when we bring it in so that we can kind of safeguard against any future problems, hopefully. Now I'm spraying this and trying to get top and bottom of leaves down into the soil surface and everything. You can see I'm looking down through there. I don't think the camera's picking up the spray, but the spray is going down amongst all those little stems and roots. And I'll pull off spots that are um, like these branches here that don't have any foliage on them. I'll pull those off, but each and every one of those will fall down into soil and root. Now here's the bowl. This is an older bowl. I think this one is probably, I don't know, several years old. I don't recall when I made that. But it has lots of little nooks and crannies in there. And as I explained on the post, that will hold the moisture, drain it away, yet hold it for the plant. It also lets air into the plant plant roots and soil. So I think Hypertufa will work out perfectly for this. Now it grows in kind of a carpet. As you can see how I've got it um, setting in the top of this, I'm going to kind of press that soil ball down into the uh, bowl of this Hypertufa. And I know I'm getting my hands and nails really, really dirty. I always mean to put in gloves, but if you're a gardener like me, you just start in and get started and just do it. Now I'm putting back in some of that soil I had pulled out initially, and it is treated with the systemic in there. So hopefully that'll help me against aphids, mealybugs, um, I don't know, thrips, that type thing. I'll have to review that list of, of bugs. And then spraying with this um, fungicide, miticide, and insecticide should help me. Now I'll put a link to this on my website and down in the under the video if you would like to order some of this I have a um, Amazon storefront if you like to go there for gardening supplies now see those roly-polies over there on the right you can see them crawling through the soil now I expect that there will be some here in the soil but I've got some ideas of how to capture those as they try to exit the soil of the plant. And they're good for the plant as far as eating the decomposing materials, things like that, 
but if they get too much they could start to eat into your roots so we won't let those multiply now it's looking real good here I've got a lot of soil mix on the side of the hypertufa and I plan to go rinse that off with the garden hose but unfortunately my camera battery died just when I get ready to spray I love to spray but don't get to show it on this video but inside now here is my plan to contain the plant um, sort of isolating it from other plants I use these jumbo two and a half gallon uh, bags when it's suitable for the size of the hypertufa I'm using or any other plant for that matter you can just open it up and you can kind of test beforehand to see if it'll slide in there but mine seem to fit perfectly so after it's all treated with the insecticide I will just push it into and then make sure that the um, little zip tie or sorry the zipper will close I can pull the plastic above the foliage of the plant and you can see it fit and you can kind of adjust it around and make sure you've got it seated inside that plastic where you want it so it's well inside and the bottom of your pot is hitting the bottom of the uh, plastic so once it's all situated and everything um, I'm gonna put some little uh, I don't know supports to hold the plastic off the plant so I chose a drinking straw and cut that in half and then I'll just go inside the uh, plastic bag and shove that down into the top so it will hold the plant above the plant leaves from touching the plastic itself because that wouldn't be good for the plant it doesn't let it circulate and might cause it to rot so we don't want to have that so there we go I've got two supports in there and if you can keep it as full of air as you can so here we go it's all ready seems to have enough room so I have a little plant spot here in the corner of the dining room and I got a plant light that will shine its Sun right over the, the top of this particular plant and I'll keep it in there for about a week possibly two weeks keep an eye on it keep an eye out for bugs if I see any I can just remove it shake it out put it back in but we're good to go so I hope you liked seeing how I planted this hypertufa I'll give you some updates later but be sure and check on the blog post doesn't that look nice? I think it's going to be gorgeous. There's my plant light. You can set it on a timer. I can link a, a affiliate link to that below. But thanks for joining me today. See you next video.